we use impulse response to define an LTI system and in this presentation we are going to calculate the impulse response when the system relationship is given followed by a small introduction. So let's begin the introductional part of this lecture. The impulse response is the output of an LTI system. The first thing you need to understand is that the impulse response is only used for LTI systems. If the system is non-LTI, you cannot calculate the impulse response. Therefore, the impulse response is only related to the LTI system and it is the output of the system when the input is unit impulse. The input should be unit impulse. You cannot have 2UT. It is not unit impulse, but it is an impulse signal having the weight equal to 2. The weight or strength here is equal to 2. Therefore, it is not a unit impulse signal. You should have unit impulse signal and when this unit impulse signal is acting as an input to your LTI system, some output will be generated and this particular output is known as the impulse response HT. Everything is hidden in the name itself, the response of the system. This means the output of the system when an impulse is applied to the system. So impulse which is unit impulse is the input to our LTI system and the response which is the output is the unit impulse response or simply it is known as impulse response. Now the impulse response is fixed for the given LTI system. I will write this point. The impulse response is fixed for the given LTI system and this is the reason we use impulse response to define the LTI system. In this presentation, after solving the second problem, you will get to know how we can use the impulse response to calculate the output. Using the impulse response, we can calculate the output for the given input and we use impulse response to define the system because it is fixed for the given LTI system and as impulse response is fixed, its Laplace transform which is the transfer function is also fixed. Now we will move to our first problem. In this problem, the relationship is given yt is equal to integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau. Now if you know how to calculate the Laplace transform of an integration, you can easily find out the Laplace transform of this system relationship and you will have the relationship in frequency domain. This relationship is in time domain but we want the relationship in frequency domain so we will take the Laplace transform and it will give us y of s equal to x of s over s. This is what we have and if you don't know some basic Laplace transforms then you can definitely visit our forum. There I have provided some standard Laplace transforms which we will use in this course. So we have y s equal to x s over s and we know the transfer function x s is equal to y s over x s. So we need to find out y s over x s from this relationship and it is very simple y s over x s is equal to 1 over s and this is nothing but the transfer function of the LTI system having this relationship. Now we want the impulse response. We have the transfer function but we want the impulse response. So to get the impulse response we need inverse Laplace transform. So we will take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s and we already know the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s is equal to the unit step signal. So we have HT, the inverse Laplace transform of XS is equal to HT and 1 by S will have the inverse Laplace transform UT. So the impulse response of the system is UT and we can define the system by using the impulse response only. Now we will move to our next problem and in this problem you will understand how we can calculate the output when the impulse response is given. But first I want to explain the method number 2 to solve this problem. In method number 2, 
instead of using the input equal to xt we will directly use the input equal to delta t because we are calculating the impulse response and we know for impulse response the input is delta t so instead of x tau here we will have delta tau i will change the color of my pen to explain you the method number two this is method number one and in method number two the output will become ht because the input is delta t we have delta tau d tau and the limit of integration is from minus infinity to t now if you know some basic properties of unit step signal and the unit impulse signal you know this point that integrating the unit impulse signal will give us the unit step signal so here we are integrating the unit impulse signal so the result is unit step signal so you can see it is very easy to calculate the impulse response in this particular case because it is one standard case integrating delta tau you will have u of t it is very obvious but in many cases you will not find the answer this easily but still you can use the unit impulse signal in place of xt and by using the properties of unit impulse signal or simply the properties of impulse signal you can easily find out the impulse response so this is all for problem number one now we will move to our next problem in this yt is equal to something which we don't know but the information of ht is given we know ht now to calculate this yt we can use one mathematical tool known as convolution i will explain this by the help of the transfer function the hs we can easily obtain after taking the laplace transform of the given impulse response you have hs and we know hs is equal to laplace transform of output over the laplace transform of input when all the initial conditions are supposed to be zero now from here we can write the output ys is equal to hs multiplied by xs hs multiplied by xs we are interested in calculating the output of the system so we have separated ys and now we will go to the time domain we are in frequency domain we want to go to the time domain so we will use the tool inverse laplace transform and when you go to the time domain you will have yt equal to ht xt but here we have multiplication and when you perform the inverse laplace transform here we will have a new operator known as convolution so convolution is an important tool which we are required to use when we are interested in calculating the output of the system when the impulse response and the input here is given so understand this important point we know what is an impulse response the impulse response is fixed for the given lti system so you can use it to define the lti system ht is given impulse response is given so we know the unique lti system we are dealing with and the input a particular input is also given the input can definitely change but ht will not change for example you want to calculate the different outputs you have ht you have different values of input now you want to calculate yt and for this you are required to use a mathematical tool known as convolution because when you perform the inverse laplace transform the multiplication will change to convolution so this is here convolution of impulse response ht and the input xt and this will give us the output of the system the convolution is a linear and time invariant operator and we will understand more about convolution in the coming presentation and it will be very easy for you to perform the convolution using different methods we have and we will also discuss about different properties of convolution which will make your task further easier so this is all for this presentation i hope you now understand what is an impulse response why it is used to define an lti system how to calculate the impulse response when the system relationship is given and how to obtain the system relationship or the output of an lti system when impulse response and input is given the tool used is known as convolution which we will discuss in the coming presentations so this is all if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one